I chose this book strictly for the cover. I love the cover, love the colors, love the vibe. Okay, so um, what is this book about? Well, you're just going to have to stay tuned to find out. Hello, my name is Flossie. This is the Grape Jelly Library, where we love to talk about books. I am so glad you could join me. I always look forward to your visit. <laughs> Yay, you made it. I've been waiting for you. Okay, so let's talk about this book, Joe Nutton's Guide to Life by Helen Fisher. All right, so right off the bat, let's give it a star rating. Should we give it a star rating right off the bat? Perhaps you will not tune in if you hear this rating. I'm giving it a three star. Three stars, but that is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. It's It lands somewhere in the middle. I mean, this book didn't knock my socks off, and I didn't dislike it enough to stop reading it, okay? All right, so we have that much established. Let me tell you a little bit about this book without telling you too much about this book. All right, so we have a young gentleman in his early 20s by the name of Joe. Joe's mother's name is Janet, and Janet's husband, Joe's father, is deceased. So it's a family dynamic duo, mother and son. Okay, so they have their routines, what they like to do. Um, every Saturday, no, every Friday, they like to go to the tavern and throw a couple beers back. Every Sunday, they like to take a walk through the cemetery to visit Joe's father, Janet's husband. Okay, so Janet is writing down in two tablets a guide to life and through life for her son, Joe, who has OCD. She just wants to make sure that if something ever happened to her, Joe would be able to maneuver his way out of a situation. She's keeping a log um, reference so Joe can go back to whenever needed, when certain situations arise. Um, there is a situation in this book that did it did arise and I was quite shocked and I don't know where that that came from but alas it is it is a situation that Joe was perplexed about and left to confront and I'm not going to say any more about that because if you read this book I you'll know right away what I'm talking about um so while visiting the local tavern um Joe's mom decides that she's going to help Joe find employment. So they um, go to the local store called Compass. And it's, it's called that because it kind of is like the nucleus of the community of the town. You, it's a one-stop shop. You can get anything from canned items to men's slacks. So Janet inquires about a job for Joe and the, the, um, I think, I'm not sure if it's the owner or the manager of the store. I think it's the owner, um, Hugo. He, um, gives Joe a chance. He says, Joe is perfect for the position. Joe actually declined the position when he was offered it. Um, didn't think it would be a good fit for him until, uh, Hugo, uh, gave him a rundown of what the job entailed. And then Joe said, okay, sounds like, you know, my cup of tea, I'll give it a try. Joe absolutely ended up loving his job. His job is to go around the store and collect the items that the patrons pick up and then put down way, way down yonder. Um, for instance, um, I think we've all seen this, maybe a pair of socks, perhaps next to the Cool Whip. I don't know. I don't know who will put socks in in a freezer section, but you know what I'm saying. So Joe's job would be to collect the socks and put them back where they belong. And he, he did love his job so much. So through working there, he met two friends. Um, they kind of befriended him right away, sensing that he was not like, he's not odd or peculiar or anything like that. He was just 
like meticulous. Um, he was different than anybody else that um, these two ladies or young girls, I should say, ever worked with. So they picked up on something, a unique quality about Joe right away, and they befriended him. With that said, there's also two bullies within the store working in the store, and they're not making Joe's job any easier. Okay, so now you have the gist of the story. So I was totally on board with this dialogue. Um, I was actually a fly on the wall. I could very much picture myself, um, you know, buzzing around on that wall, buzz, buzz, and just kind of listening to how the story's unfolding and how the characters are interacting. Coincidentally, Joe's mother, who is writing this guide to life down in these tablets, um, does happen to pass away rather quickly within the storyline. Um, so Joe is constantly referring to these books or the friends that you know, the elder friends that were his mothers and um, just maybe trying to figure some things out on his own and just doing what he can. Now, Joe heavily, heavily relates to his favorite show is Friends. Okay, so that is one of my least favorite shows. I don't even think I've ever seen a full episode of Friends. Not that Friends is a bad show, just that Friends is not my cup of tea. Um, but Joe is heavily identifying with that show. He, he's almost obsessed with it. Well, as I said, I'm following the storyline and I'm okay with it. I'm enjoying it. I'm having a good time until I'm going to say, I'm going to say that the friends theme in this book kind of took over. I felt like there was too many references to it. And that is not based on my dislike of the show. It's just based on, or maybe that was the point that the author was trying to make, just like how obsessed Joe is with this show that it is referred to or referenced a lot in this book. Um, but you know what? Here's the thing. So my thing is, my thing is Elvis and it's always going to be Elvis, but I am very, very careful to not talk about Elvis because um, that's not your thing or or this person's thing or this person's thing. And the last thing that I want to do is bore anybody with something that they're not interested in. So that's kind of what I'm saying. I became bored with the references um, of friends. And also Joe happens to look like Joey, the character Joey, coincidentally, um, from friends. So there's that. Towards the end of the book, uh, towards the end of the book, there was some stuff that unfolded that I didn't necessarily agree with. I felt like it just should have been left out entirely. Um, and it's not anything like biased or revealing or any kind of uh, revelation of how I feel. I just don't feel like this certain reference had a place in this book. I feel like it kind of ruined it. It kind of put a damper on it. Huh. So that's what, like those two aspects alone is what really brought the book rating down for me. So that's kind of like what I want to say. Um, it's a good book. It just had a couple of, let's see, bumps in the road for me. And I'm not one that, you know, I don't get hung up on things and I don't get like, um, bent out of shape over things. So um, it's not it's not that I couldn't have gotten past those two things. And if you love the show Friends, uh, then you're going to love this book. And um, yeah. So that's all. That's what I'm going to say about this book. Yeah. I'm, no, I'll add this to it. All right. The um, bully within this story. There's, there's a... Um, there is a storyline within a storyline when it comes to this bully. Is that how I want to actually view this? I don't know. I don't know if that's the right way to phrase that or put that. But the um, story that's unfolding for the bully is just as 
interesting and entertaining as the story that is folding uh, before our eyes when it comes to um, Joe. So, yeah, take that, you know, my review with a grain of salt and read it by all means and see what you think about it. You know, diversity is a good thing. Until we meet again, know that I love you. Don't let those bad days win. And when you dream, make sure you're dreaming big.